What's going on, y'all? So let's Oh, so we are back again for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 2, The Reunion Part 1. So everybody looks a hot ass mess, just about. Um, Nina is the host yet again. Uh, bitch, get your coins, okay? People tired of your ass, but you know, bitch, get your coins, okay? Um, let the asses fight. Security, security be up on that stage. Red tea for these neck guys. Um, anyway, so, um, <clears throat> They get up there, they talking about the whole Amada La Negra and um, Jesse Wu and um, JoJo situation. JoJo, I'm sorry, JoJo looks stuff. JoJo look like Miss Piggy came to life, okay? Bitch, I'm just saying, and no shade, but that's exactly what she looked like. She looked very stuffed and uncomfortable. But for the most part, what she had on was cute, but she just looked stuff. Moving on from that... Um, you know, they started talking about the initial meeting that they had when, uh, um, you know, Jesse threw that bottle at Amada and she was like, she was trying to throw it at somebody else and all this stuff. And it was like, no, bitch, you got upset at the fact that, um, you know, uh, I called you Joanne by your first name because your mama called you that. That's what your mama called you. So why are you getting upset? And bitch, the only thing that you good at doing is throwing bottles. That's the only talent that you got because you ain't got no talent and all that shit. whoop de woo Then they start talking about the whole thing with Amada going into the DMs and or, or, or you know, trying to talk to, um, not Amada going into the DMs, but Amada trying to talk to um, Jesse Wu's boyfriend at the time, and she was like, no, they was doing a meeting, and they was talking about topics on girl talk or whatever, and, uh, one of the topics was, would you take somebody back that cheated on you and all this stuff, and that was the question, and then, um, you know, here go Jesse Wu, we're not gonna agree with, um, on this subject, because that's not what happened, and all this shit, next thing you know, they get into it, bitch. And she was like, you know what? You can come up here and be like, I was like, damn, Amada, because Amada got that ass together for a second, okay? Because she was like, you want to come up here and make it like everything is all cool. You don't want to talk about nothing. But then you talking other shit behind people back. And now all of a sudden, you don't want to say nothing. And then what really pissed Amada off was because she was talking about her mom. Because she said, you know, uh, Jesse was talking about my mama of 35 years and all this shit. But her mama is only the bitch that makes the empanadas and all this stuff. And she was like fuck that shit that bitch that made them empanadas made me the woman that i am today okay and she was like i you know i was on the modest side this side on uh, because uh, you don't talk about mamas and she did that shit already before and we already know amada don't play and a lot of us don't play about our mamas bitch we can talk shit about our own parents but you can't okay but when she was like um you know, your mama called me a bitch. And it was like, so what? Your mama called me a bitch. I sure did say that. And it was like, well, bitch, you are. She was like, well, your mama barbaric. And she, you can take that barbaric ass shit that she's saying. I said, Jesse, you need your ass whipped. You need your ass whipped. That lady didn't call you no bitch out of the um blue. Okay? Because, bitch, you a fucking bitch. You think too highly of your motherfucking self, bitch. Okay? I was just sitting here like... You know what, Amada, you did good for the most part because I would have got up and beat that bitch ass. I would have got up and beat that bitch ass. She said, bitch, I'm going to sit here like the queen I am and I'm going to hold my motherfucking crown and I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to say what I have to say and I'm going to let that shit go. Then, bitch, they started getting into it about Julian. Julian and his ass, you know, he just sitting there. He looked like, he remind me of Red from, um, um, heart, five heartbeat. Business hours is from nine to five. Okay, that's who he reminded me of, bitch. And um, remember when he was walking down that stage? I just want somebody to slap the dog shit out of him. I really did. Remember when uh, in the fat heartbeat when he was walking down the aisle at the funeral and then gonna give um Diane Carroll the goddamn rose and tell her something if you need anything, anything, you know? Ah, and girl, and she slapped the dog shit out of him. That's what I wanted to happen to Julian because Julian knows what he's doing. Julian is up here playing people, okay? And if everybody's saying the same thing, they all can't be lying, all right? Um, you know, Michelle Pooch is being managed by him. He's not doing nothing for her. Bitch, Becky, uh, um, Shay said, well, bitch, um, what the fuck you doing, okay? Is you giving him something to manage or whatever? Let's be real. Let's be real because you're not giving him nothing. And I said, well, damn, and Nina must have thought caught on what we was all thinking i thought y'all was cool and shay was like 
yeah, we cool. That's my homegirl, but she know I'm going to spit that real to her. And I was like, all right, but bitch, you was kind of harsh, but okay. You know, and Pooch let it grow. She was like, you know, she was involved with a dude for three years or whatever. And she took precedent over that relationship. That relationship took precedent over everything that she was doing or whatever. And she had this nail bar and she really wasn't focusing that much on being a DJ. Then, you know, Pleasure was saying how um, he a hustler, so he don't going to let no nothing stop him. So basically that was a guess. And then um, uh, everybody else who was managed by we already knew Jesse was managed by him at one point. And then uh, Trina said she has a business relationship. That's her business partner and her management team. And yes, he has been a little bit neglectful. And then at this point, Bobby gets into it. And he started going off saying, I really don't know you like that. And Julian said, then what the fuck are you talking for? On the one hand, I agree with Julian. But he just came off very defensive. But I understand because everybody is just gunning for his ass. But obviously, you're not doing your job right. So, of course, you're going to be on the defense because everybody is spilling your tea and when bobby calls him homophobic i was like eh but then i'm looking and i'm like i can see it i can see it you know he was like bobby trying to <laughs> he, he set up he was like see what you don't understand he was like no you ain't gotta bring the security because i ain't gonna get up and then bobby's like bitch i beat your motherfucker ass you ain't gonna see what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and bobby the one that got his ass up i said lord jesus bobby please sit down y'all don't do this on the stage not tonight so basically, Julian said he ain't homophobic. Trina kind of backed that up, and he just basically said he don't fuck with Bobby. And, um, you know, Trina said the reason why she said he ain't homophobic is because she got a lot of gay people on her team, and he never, you know, displayed any, like, homophobic actions or whatever towards him. And, you know, even though I said I can kind of see it, but also when a motherfucker said he just don't fuck with you, he just don't fuck with you, and Bobby is really not that hard to understand why a motherfucker do not want to fuck with you, Okay. Because you do a whole fucking lot. And then when Tip tried to get into it and was telling him, um, he already said why he don't like you. Because he was like, let's just clear it out or whatever. He already said he just don't fuck with you. That's what it is. He don't respect you. He don't fuck with you. That's what it is. And, you know, Tip was like, just leave the man alone. It is what it is. And he just couldn't let that shit go. Them two going at each other. And it just got real messy and real loud for no fucking reason. Um, you know, they was like, why did you try to blackball Jesse? He said, I was talking to some people. They said that they was working with Jesse. And I said, well, I don't fuck with her. And if you do, oh, well. Okay. She was like, at the end of the day, it don't matter. I'm under new management and I'm doing what I got to do. Okay. Um, they started talking about Trina and, um, the, uh, record label and, you know, Bobby Lights going ahead and signing with Clear Vision. And she said what she had to say, you know, um, it's a good thing now that he went on ahead and did what he had to do because I don't want to be held responsible for whichever way his career goes and all this stuff. And she basically, you know, said her piece and he understood it and, um, he backed it up and, um, it is what it is at the end of the day. So they all to the good, um, and, you know, and Tip, you know, she was saying when um she got involved because she knew how they were and she just wanted to defuse the situation before it got heated. Um, Shay was like, well, at the end of the day, I feel like they did. The, he did what was necessary because you don't want to work with family and be held responsible and all this stuff. And then shit happens and then y'all have a fallout and Bobby say he's still learning and all that shit. Whoop -de -whoop. Child, they get into the whole thing with Pretty Ricky and Pleasure P not wanting to be in the group and how he was tired of the shit. And, you know, basically how old boy came at them. I was so confused by everything. I, I, maybe because this the third hour, I just was zoning out. Basically, what I got from this is, you know, he it sounded like specking them. They still kind of taking up for the way that the daddy was treating them. And especially Speck, and he was like, well, he a street nigga. That's what they saying. He a street nigga. He don't show emotions. He don't want to talk about shit like that. So that's why he reacted the way that he reacted. That's still no excuse. But still, um, you know, uh, Baby Blue, whoa, he had a little breakdown. He was crying because he didn't like to see the way that they were and all that stuff. Speck got over there and um, gave him a hug. That was a little touching, cute moment, whatever. But then they started talking about how they really didn't get no money. They didn't pleasure. You finally spoke up and you told the truth that Spectacular was not lying when he said that you ain't get the money, but it's like you justifying what it was. Just because the daddy used his money to get y'all places, this is what a lot of people do. They use other people's money to get them there and then they pay them, but they also see returns on their money too. They get a profit off of the shit too. 
And for y'all not to have gotten anything at all, y'all was swindled, bitch. That's what the fuck y'all was, okay? Y'all was just like these other groups that um was taking advantage of. I don't give a fuck if he used his money or not. Y'all was taking advantage of. Y'all could at least saw a dime of that shit. Y'all said y'all ain't seen nothing. That wasn't right. Um, then they get into this whole thing about, you know, spectacular, um, because, oh, you know, pleasure was talking about how, um, the, the, you see who not here. Okay. It's talking about slick them. Uh, that's what he's talking about when he was saying, um, people not coming together, people not doing what they have to do, people not showing up and all this shit. And I said, that is right. Slick them wasn't on the last episode or the episode before that. And he ain't at the reunion. And I said, oh Lord, y'all know slick them get drunk and all that stuff and just fuck shit up sometimes. I just really hope they make it through. Girl, after April 27th, I'm, um, breathe a sigh of relief. I'll be like, whew. Okay, because I just don't want them to fuck this shit up for me. Okay, I'm I'm being a little selfish right now. I just don't want them to fuck this shit up for me, okay? Because I am ready. I am so ready to get the ratchetness out of my system, like, just to be a bird up in this bitch, like, you know. And y'all know I'm ready to, I'm ready to fucking fly up in this hole, all right? You know, I've been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, bitch, okay? I'm ready to let loose, all right? Um, anyway, so they started talking about the freaking... Uh, Facebook page and, you know, Pleasure uh, um, Spectacular making these pages and, you know, he was like, y'all talking about just one page. I make, I, I manage the pages of over 100 celebrities and all this stuff and I make like 20, 60,000 a day. I said, damn, bitch, give me some. It was like, I pay for everything. I don't be front the bill. I don't be front the bill. And they was basically saying, but the first page that you started was our page and we, since it was our page and it had our name on it, we should um, at least get a percentage of it. And Shay was just trying to say, I don't feel like y'all should get 50, 50 of it, but y'all should get at least like 10% or something like that because it is, you know, y'all name and all that stuff. And I get where she coming from. I get where everybody coming from, but it just got real messy up there. And I was just like, whoo, y'all figure this shit out. And so we get to, to, uh, to, 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 we get to chaotic and his whole PTSD thing. And they, you know, I'm glad that as, as silly as he sound when he talking about it, cause he can't help but be the comedic relief and be, you know, um, you know, funny with his stuff, but he was speaking some real shit in, in, in hood nigga talk. Okay. Um, you know, about how he used to just go talk to the homies about stuff and the way that they talk to him is just like, oh, yo, just take a drink of this, take a hit of this and everything could be all right. And he was saying how it was good to talk to somebody, a doctor who actually knew what they were speaking on and um, could give him advice, real advice about how to handle things, techniques and stuff like that. And, um, you know, how it, you know, doing it the way that he been doing, normalized. And that's what a lot of black people um, especially black men normalize their behavior and their way of having counsel and counsel and um, therapy and um, not actually seeking the help of a professional and stuff like that. And he said his case, he got eight charges. Six of them was dismissed. He got two for evading um, the cops and reckless driving. And he going to drop, they going to probably drop that. And then he going to sue the police department. He going to get him a bag and they going to buy him a new car. I said, nigga, I hope it works out that way. Why you out here putting it out here like that? I mean, you got to speak stuff into the universe, speak it into existence, but Hey, it is what it is. They talked about the cookout thing. Was Trick ever going to give him a, um, a feature? And at this point, Trick claimed that he was. And, you know, it was like, we're going to back and we can do this shit right now. Whatever. Then they get into it with Joy. And at this point, Joy said, oh, they started in the papers. Um, Trick Daddy talking about something. He finally going to give her the divorce, but he ain't paying for shit else. He just going to pay for that divorce. And that's it. He ain't giving her no money, no nothing. And um, it was like, I ain't paying for nothing when she had a whole ass boyfriends and all this stuff. She was like, well, bitch, you had a whole ass girl and her whole family living up in the house that got my name on it. I put your name on that. So the fuck what? You still had the bitch up in there. See, Trick, just, I, I can't stand that double standard ass thinking way of thinking 
you can do whatever it is that you want because you hold the purse strings or whatever and you're the man of the house and therefore, you know, you can bring this bitch, this hoe up in there, but let her go off and do what she want to do. Oh, it's in the end of the world, but you just did the same thing. Mind you, she probably was already over with your ass and had these niggas or whatever that you claim she had when she said, bitch, I'm getting a divorce from you and we're separated and we're done. And it was your ass that kept on holding on and wouldn't do right. So it is what it is. She said, bitch, at the end of the day, just talk to my goddamn lawyer. And I said, that's all you can do right now, Joy. So at this point, um, they start talking about Veronica Vega and, you know, what the backlash did to her career of her saying nigga and all this stuff. And, um, you know, she just basically said, if you're a racist, you can live with it, but you can't live with it when you're not a racist and that's not who you are. And, you know, people around her knew where she was coming from and all this stuff. And they were making excuses and all this shit for her saying it and all this spectrum and all this bullshit, whatever. But at the end of the day, you don't get a pass, okay? I don't care what y'all want to try to justify this. You don't get a pass, all right? Uh, if you're not black, don't say that shit, all right? Um... Like I said, some black people will argue that black folks don't need to say it. That, that That's valid too, okay? And then Trina tried to put her input. Jesse Wu was like, you know, I was one of the ones who said that she didn't say it. And we spoke about it and seeing her, you know, I still feel like, you know, she shouldn't have said it. And um, get another view of where she was coming from and all that shit. You know, she probably saying it because of who she's around and all this stuff and not because she was trying to mean it in a mean way. That's still not the point, okay? You just shouldn't be saying a word. I don't give a fuck, okay? I truly don't give a fuck. I didn't like it when... Mariah Lynn said that shit last week on um the the reunion and to Rich and nobody corrected her or nobody stopped her. Somebody's talking about something. Well, she Puerto Rican in this. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Okay, you are a white Latina at this point. Okay, that's what you are. All right, I don't give a fuck. Okay, don't say it. Um, and then and then what really pissed me off about this thing was once again they bring up the fact that. Amada La Negra didn't come through and say anything about it herself. And Bobby, you shut the fuck up talking about some Amada was capitalizing on it. How she capitalizing on something? I am not. Let me just tell you the type of person I am. Bitch, if we're no longer friends, because something very deep has to happen for me to tell you that I am no longer your friends. Even when we get into it, if I get into it with a friend, um, we just get into it and we don't speak for a couple of days or whatever. And then, you know, I, I miss the bitch and we'll just be like, yo, so I apologize and stuff like that. And we still good. You my bitch and all that shit, whatever. But if it gets to the point where I say, bitch, I am not your friend. Don't fucking call me. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's over. It's done with. Bitch, that's what it is. Now, if that's the case and I say that shit, Benito, done. Regardless of all the memories, regardless of all the things that we've done together, it don't fucking matter no more, okay? We are no longer friends. I am no longer responsible for you. I am not obligated to speak up for you because, bitch, you are not in my life at this point anymore, okay? And so, therefore, if you get yourself in a shit show of some bullshit, it is not my responsibility. It is not my obligation to come out and to defend your ass, okay? So, Veronica, baby girl, as much as you want to think that she should have spoke up, up, Amada didn't have to speak up for your ignorance, okay? Because you should have known already that you was going to get some backlash for saying this shit. Just because that small group of people that um that's around you, black folks that's around you in your crew that don't mind that you say that word or whatever, and some other people down there in Miami will let you do that because that's what they do down there, don't mean that everybody here over here and over here and over here is going to be cool with that. So you should have thought that shit through yourself, first of all. That is on you, okay? Second and third of all, um, what, what am I, first of all, second of all, second of all, bitch, like I said, Amada wasn't your friend, so therefore, why the fuck would she come out and defend your ass? She couldn't stand your ass at that moment because y'all got into it too over the shit that was going on with her and young Hollywood. Bobby, you shut the fuck up because you wouldn't understand either. I ain't like it when you go little bitch ass ass too sometimes. Anyway, moving on from that. Trick Daddy, you're full of shit and you're ignorant as fuck, okay? You just pissed off and mad that she didn't want to go on that date with you. So you come out your mouth and you say some shit talking about some, 
um, you should have been on the head and um, spoke up for her and, and, and came out and defended her because y'all both Spanish. And to be quite honest, you they don't look at you as the Spanish girl. They look at you, the black girl with the afro. And you more Spanish than her because she can speak clear English, but you can't. That shit was not fucking needed. And you did that shit on fucking purpose. You're ignorant as hell. And no. Okay, Trick Daddy, if we fell out, bitch, I'm not finna defend your ass on some bullshit that you did. Nine out of ten, I'm gonna agree with the other person because you Trick Daddy and I know you're gonna be on some bullshit. Okay? That was fucked up. And at the end of the day, I like the way I'm out of hand of that shit. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, I'm not here to pick no fight with this bitch. And whatever. I'm going to just continue to move on. I've been an advocate for this for since before this shit happened. And so, it you 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 could take it or leave it. Okay? And so, that was just it. I was just looking at them like, are we really going to do this? Y'all really going to get mad at this girl and blame this girl for not having your back when you didn't have hers? Veronica, you didn't have her back like you were supposed to. And you want her to have yours? Like, you went and befriended the nigga that was talking racist shit to her. And you want people to come out and say that you weren't racist? Girl, get the fuck out. Pot me, motherfucking cattle, bitch. Child, and this part one reunion ended with this whole Trick Daddy versus Trina and the records and shit. And how Trina, Trina, let me just say... If Trina said that she murked um, Trick Daddy on the record, I believe her because she just murked him on this stage. I don't know if he was just trying to let her go and be quiet because, you know, it don't look good for a nigga to be arguing with a, 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 a woman. But, baby, baby, Trina got that ass together. Bitch, he talked about some our fans, our fans want that uh, old baddest bitch ratchet shit. We want that pretty girl shit or whatever. Uh, we want the same shit from back in the day. We, they ain't like the fans today. Bitch, Bobby was like, and I agree with him. No, they not. Okay. Um, baby, everybody has to evolve. We don't want to hear the same old shit. If we want to hear the same old shit, bitch, we'll put the same old records on. Okay. That's what it is, baby. Okay. I love you. Uh, uh, you know that. Okay. Everybody love that shit. Everybody love the baddest bitch. But we also got to evolve, evolve to the um times. Okay. That's what you have to do. Keep that same feel, but evolved at the same time. Okay. Keep the same essence, but evolve. And you stuck in 1998, like um Trina said. And uh, she was like, bitch, I murked your ass on the, song, on the song. We both got on black and we see one. You want to go there? See, bitch, I murked your ass on the song. You just mad because I had the hardest voice. Okay. That's what it is. It was like, without no trick daddy, it won't be no Trina. It won't be. You can't say no uh trick daddy. You can't say Miami without trick daddy and all this stuff that wasn't even a point that wasn't even a point the point is you probably and that's what it seemed like a jealousy issue okay and like trina said in the past 10 years bitch what trick daddy song have we ever heard of that really popped or whatever but who been doing some music in the last 10 years trina and i got trina mixtape the one the ep or whatever blue flame or whatever the fuck it is it's cute you know what i'm saying but um yeah Ain't nobody checking for no trick like that, especially not with your ignorant acting ass the way you are now. But Trina, just do what you got to do, okay? You know what you worth. Uh, you ain't got to put up with that bullshit, okay? He ain't your daddy and he ain't your nigga. So that was the end of it. Um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I will see you guys later. Remember, next week, next Monday, it's Love and Hip Hop ATL. The first episode and the second episode. And then right after that in the third hour, it is the part two of this Love & Hip Hop um, Miami reunion. Why they doing it like this? I don't know. It seems like they rushing all of this stuff. And I just don't understand. Like, is it about to go off for good for good? And you just trying to get it out and meet a quota? But whatever it is, it's a little odd. Okay? And tiring at the same time. But y'all tell me how y'all feel. And I will see you guys later. Peace.